Hey designers, in this video, we're taking the input component we just built and using it to create a fully functional, customizable drop-down component in Figma. Hey everyone, welcome back to Figma Fusion Studio. Start by copying the input base component we created earlier and paste it here. If you haven't seen the video on how to create the input base component, I highly recommend watching it first. The link is added in the description and it'll also appear on the top right corner of the screen. Wrap it inside a new auto layout frame. Set the padding and gap of this frame to 0px. Rename this new frame to dropdown. Finally, create a new component from right side bar and selecting create component option. Next, add the dropdown indicator, down arrow. Copy the down arrow icon from your icon component. Paste it inside the dropdown component you just created. You'll notice the icon appears below the input box. Let's fix that. Wrap the icon in an auto layout frame and rename it to down arrow. Now set its width and height to 36px. This is calculated based on the input height 38px minus the top and bottom border 1px each. So, 38 minus 2 is equal to 36px. In the right sidebar, set its position to absolute. Use the alignment tools to align it to the top right of the input box. Set alignment to center and give it a white background. And update icon color to same as text color. You may notice the right top and bottom corners are getting clipped due to the input's border radius and it's aligned to top right so. Move 1px down and left and apply a 3px border radius to the top right and bottom right corners. Lastly, if your organization uses a specific background color for drop-down buttons, go ahead and update it accordingly. Next, let's talk about designing the Select Box option. If your organization is using the default HTML Select Element, you may not need to design the drop-down options because native Select Elements behave differently across browsers and operating system. For example, the appearance in Chrome on macOS can be very different from Firefox on Windows. So if your team is sticking with the default, it's best to design just the input part trigger, not the drop-down option. But if you must design the option styles like in cases of a custom drop-down, navigation menu, or fully styled component, be sure to check with your development team about what's being built before you proceed with designing the drop-down list. Now, we're going to design the custom drop-down options, so let's create the option style. Select the text tool and type, Option. Set the typography, I given font, poppins, size, 16px, weight, regular, line height, 160 percentage, text color. Use your default text color as per the design system. Wrap this text inside an auto layout frame. Rename the frame to drop-down option, Set gap to 0px. Set padding. Left right, 12px. Top bottom, 4px. Select the text and set its width to fill container. Finally, convert the entire frame into a component. Set background and alignment. Update the background color of the drop down option component to white. Align the text to the left, currently it's center align. Create a text property for dynamic control. Select the text inside the component. In the right sidebar, click the apply variable property icon and click the plus icon to add a new property. Name the property, option value. Set the default value as option. Once done, you'll see the text color change to purple indicating that it's now controlled by a property. You can now edit this property easily to update the label text dynamically. Create a hover variant. With the component selected, click the plus icon on the right sidebar to create a new variant. Change the background color of this new variant to light blue. Make sure this color passes accessibility standards for contrast. Select the hover variant. In the right sidebar, rename it to Hover. Create a selected variant. Click the plus icon in the right sidebar to add a new variant. Rename it to Selected. 
change the text color to orange to indicate selection. Improve accessibility for colorblind users. Relying only on color might not be enough users with color vision deficiencies may not distinguish the selected state. To add an additional visual indicator, underline the selected text. Select the text inside selected variant. Press Command U to apply and underline. This makes it easier for all users to recognize which option is selected ensuring better accessibility. Add Focus Variant. Click the plus icon to create a new variant. Rename it to Focus. Update the border color to blue. Use the same blue from the input base component to maintain consistency. Change the border type to Outside and set the thickness to Tupac. Optional, add disabled state. If your project needs it, you can add a disabled variant. Set up interactions in prototype tab. Go to the prototype tab, hover interaction, select the default variant. Drag a connection to the hover variant. Set interaction to while hovering. Focus interaction. From both the default and hover variants, drag to the focus variant. Change the interaction to on click to while pressing or set to on key press if simulating keyboard navigation. Now your drop down options are fully interactive and accessible with hover and focus states, great for both mouse and keyboard users. Next, integrate drop down options into the drop down component. Copy the default option form drop down option component and move it aside on your canvas. Create drop down options container. Create a new component and not renaming now. Keep it as it is for now. Set the height to 38 packs to prevent drop-down height from auto-resizing when options are added. This ensures design consistency across screen. Paste the copied option inside this component. Apply auto layout to the drop-down options component. Set gap to 2px and padding to 1px. Apply the same border styling used in your input base component for consistency. Set bottom left and bottom right corner radius to 4px. Duplicate the option component as many times as needed. For now, duplicate it six times to simulate a list. Rename your drop-down options component to options for clarity. Set the background color to white. Options container width change to fill container. Select all the options and make width as fill container to keep them aligned in layout. You may notice the top border of the options container appears thicker, like two pixels. This happens because both the input and the options container have borders. To fix this, option A, remove the top border from the options container. Option B, set the gap between the input and the options container to minus one pixel in the drop-down variant. This will visually merge the two borders into one. Next, add visibility control for the drop-down options. Select the default variant of your drop-down component. In the right sidebar, rename property one to Options. Set its value to False. Select the second variant with options visible. Set the options value to True. This now behaves like a Boolean toggle, allowing visibility control for the drop-down. Set up interaction. Select the default drop-down variant. In the Prototype tab, drag to the open state. Set the trigger to On Click. From the open state, select the input base. Drag back to the default state, Options, False. Set this interaction as On Click. Now your dropdown opens and closes on click. Let's test the dropdown component. Copy the default dropdown component. Create a new artboard and paste the component into it. Preview the interaction. Click the present preview icon in the top right corner. 
Click on the drop-down input. The options should appear. Click again. The options should close. Go back to editor mode and open the drop-down component. Update text values inside the drop-down option. For example, option 1, option 2, option 3, etc. Go to preview mode in TETH. You'll see the updated option text when the drop-down opens. Now return to the editor, close the options, and test again in preview. On click, the drop-down opens but text isn't updated. This is a common issue in Figma interaction. But don't worry, we'll cover how to fix it in the next video. In many popular design systems, you might have seen drop-downs built with multiple variants for each option like option 1, option 2, option n, and so on. That can get unnecessarily complex. So let's simplify it. In the next video, I'll show you how to achieve the same result with a single variant, making your design system cleaner and more scalable. Keep designing. Keep exploring. See you in the next video.